The amount of unexplored ocean is mind-blowing. We have much more to learn about what's in the depths below waiting to be found. With our underwater technology, we've been finding new things all the time, and with it getting better, there will be many more things to discover. Today, we'll be talking about some of those rare finds. That's a what is that? giant isopod. Is that like a hard almond type shell or is that? From a bloody belly jellyfish to a sea devil anglerfish on the 15 most terrible deep sea creatures you've never seen before. A beach walker was shocked to find a rarely seen fish with a freaky looking body shaped like a football washed up at a California beach. This spooky fish is completely black and has extremely sharp, pointy teeth. It's said the creature is most likely a female Pacific football fish, one of the more than 200 species of anglerfish around the world, normally found thousands of feet deep in the ocean. These deep sea anglerfish are found at depths of more than 3,000 feet. To see an actual anglerfish intact is extremely rare, and it's unknown how or why the fish ended up on the shore. Female football fish can grow up to 24 inches long, but males only grow to be about an inch long, so this is clearly a female. The male's main purpose is to help females reproduce. The fascinating fish has a bulb on its head that emits light to attract prey. Males latch onto the female with their teeth and become parasites, eventually getting absorbed into the female until nothing is left of their form but their testes for reproduction. No one knows how or why the strange fish washed ashore but it's crazy how much there still is to be learned from our vast oceans. This is one fish we're glad is only found deep enough that we can run into them in the darkness. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Big Red Jelly Like a big red spaceship cruising the ocean depths, these jellyfish are truly otherworldly. Despite its big size, scientists didn't encounter it until 1993. These giant jellies are found between 600 and 2100 meters and the bell can reach up to one meter across. The fact that scientists could miss something so large and with such a wide range suggests that many more secrets await us in the deep sea. Biologists are slowly gaining a better understanding of how and why the jellies evolved. Needless to say, fossils of jellies are few and far between. The evidence now suggests that jellies are an ancient life form, hundreds of millions of years old, but many questions remain. For example, the jellies are typically classified into two types, those with tentacles and those without. There are still so many unanswered questions about this jelly. What does it eat? Who are its predators? How does it mate? We have an idea of where it lives and continues to document sightings, but there's still much to learn about its role in the ecosystem. The discovery of the Big Red Jelly was the result of the dedication, luck, careful use of technology, and what marine researchers know for certain is that the jellies they've discovered so far represent only a small part of what's out there. <laughs> Brittle Sea Star These sea stars pretty much look like aliens, so good thing they're not seen often. There are about 2,000 species of brittle stars which are close relatives of sea stars. They consist of two major groups, brittle stars and basket stars. Most are found at depths greater than 500 meters to greater than 6 kilometers. They normally move slowly along the seabed. Most brittle stars have five long, slender, whip-like arms which can be 60 centimeters in length and the largest species, although most are under 2.5 centimeters in diameter. They usually become mature at around 2 years, become fully grown in 3 to 4 years, and live up to 5 years. They do not depend on tube feet, which are more sensory tentacles without suction. Brittle stars move pretty quickly by wriggling their arms, which are highly flexible and enable the animals to make either snake-like movements. The animals are sometimes known as the garbage collectors of the sea, and are one of the few species that occur in abundance from the tropics to Antarctica. Some are small-scale scavengers, others are more predatory. The stars show that the freezing deep sea below Antarctica was an evolutionary hotspot, overturning previous thoughts that the cold temperatures had slowed the pace of evolution. Most brittle stars are scavengers, eating decaying matter and plankton. Some are predators, pushing their stomachs out through their mouths to digest their prey. 
basket stars are suspension feeders, using the mucus coating on their arms to trap plankton and bacteria. They extend one arm out and use the other four to keep them in place. <laughs> Whiplash Squid Not only does this creature have an amazing name, it's also magnificent, magical, and marvelous looking. This whiplash squid is very mesmerizing. Known as whiplash squid for their distinctive long retractable tentacles, they're a relatively common species occurring throughout the tropical and warm temperate Atlantic Ocean. They're known for their long tentacles with microscopic suckers and a large fin that helps them hover above the ocean floor. As they grew, they moved deeper into the water column from 200 to 600 meters or 1,000 to 1,500 meters, possibly to avoid being eaten by whales. They often swim in a head-down position with their two long tentacles close to the bottom of the seafloor, using their large fins to maintain position. Their diet is known to consist of mainly small crustaceans. The red color is an adaptation that many deep-sea creatures use to avoid being seen by predators. When living at a depth where only blue light penetrates, being red means no blue light is reflected, but instead absorbed, making them very difficult to see, unless, of course, that predator can generate its own red light, which some fish with bioorgans called photophores can. Even though they live in almost darkness, they can change color from red to white and back again, possibly as a means of communication between squid or as a way to confuse predators. Sadly, like many creatures of the deep, not much is known about this species because of the hard-to-reach deep water habitat. It remains a true, strange, and little-known creature of the deep. <laughs> Ooh. Frilled Shark The frilled shark is one of the shark world's most unique species. Frilled sharks are active predators and may lunge at potential prey, swallowing it whole, even if it is quite huge. Their typical swimming style, however, is eel-like as they swim in a serpentine fashion. The preferred prey of the frilled shark is squid. The frilled shark's mouth is just as terrifying as a great white's. It has 25 rows of backward-facing, trident-shaped teeth, 300 of them, so at least it's not 301, because that would be too dangerous, right? Honestly, we wouldn't want to run into this even if it had no teeth. The teeth are constructed for grasping, and from their odd shape and sharpness, it seems as if nothing that once came within their reach could escape. Though they specialize in squids, frilled sharks are known to eat a variety of fish and also other sharks. No one has ever observed the frilled shark hunting, but scientists believe that it uses its fins to launch itself at its next victim. Its long jaws may allow the animal to gape extra wide and take in prey half as long as its body. The frilled shark's diet is 61% squid, octopus, 11% smaller fish, and occasionally even other sharks. Scientists theorize that the massive length has something to do with the shark's cold, deep-sea habitat. Little is known about the population trends of the sharks, but they're rarely encountered by people and are very rare. In some places, they're accidentally caught as bycatch in fisheries targeting other species, and in some cases, they may be kept and used as food. No fisheries specifically target frilled sharks. The frilled shark is considered to be near-threatened with extinction. We're very lucky these things stay below. Would you swim if this shark could come near the shore? most people would probably give up swimming altogether, don't you think? Let us know your opinion down below. <laughs> giant Isopod Deep-sea giant isopods do not seem like something you would want to run into, right? What are isopods? Well, after this, you'll know for sure these unique animals inhabit the depths of every ocean. They're a diverse family with animals on land and in sea. They're the largest species of the isopod family. Despite their interesting looks and their decent size, not much else is known about them. We know where they live, but these strange animals have yet to be the focus of studies and are still somewhat of a mystery to science, despite being first discovered in 1879. There are a lot of animals living on the seabed that seem odd to us on land. Giant isopods can live 500 meters or more below the ocean surface. But these 14-legged beasts are relatives of the little wood lice you might find in the garden and are distant cousins. Resources are scarce in the depths of the ocean. Isopods rely on food falling from closer to the surface, as the seafloor is mostly barren. 
Sometimes big parcels of food reach the seabed, such as whale tails. From what we know so far, they're not as fierce as they look. They're scavengers and will eat any of the falling marine snow and what's wrapped up in it. So things like crab flesh and marine worms. Not only does the deep offer small amounts of food, there's also a lack of light. The isopods have sensory adaptations to help them navigate in the dark. The deeper you go, the less light there is. They have a large sensory organ so that they can feel their way around. Giant isopods also have very large eyes in comparison to their body. The isopods also have little hooked claws at the ends of their legs. These make the animal more stable on the ocean floor. They might not be very dangerous, but if these were crawling all over you, it wouldn't be fun. Viperfish The name of this fish really makes you scared right from the start. So let's learn more about them and hope they're not as dangerous as they sound. The Pacific viperfish looks like a fearsome predator at least to small fish and shrimp. But in the deep sea, everyone is on the menu and needs to adapt ways to avoid becoming dinner. They're among the countless marine animals that migrate each night from the ocean's depths to shallower surface waters to eat, then go back down again. Their needle-like teeth are key to their hunting strategy. The two front fangs extend far from the fish's bottom jaw up past its eyes. By releasing their jaws, their mouths can open wide enough to eat large prey items. The terrifying teeth form a cage to prevent escape. While the prey is swallowed whole, the advantages of having fangs like these are more important than you might think. There's little hope for escape from those jaws. Viperfish are found in tropical and temperate waters throughout the world at depths of up to 2,800 meters. They're rarely seen by humans, although specimens do sometimes show up in the catches of deep water nets. These rare catches provide scientists with special opportunities to study this unique animal. Because they live in such deep waters, it's believed that human activity has very little impact on their populations. You really wouldn't want your hand to get stuck in its mouth. On second thought, let's move on before we give you some nightmares. <laughs> basket Star A trip to the grocery store usually requires a basket to hold all those groceries. But a relative of the well-known sea star doesn't need to grab a basket to hold its groceries. It already has one. The basket star is found in cold to warm waters in both the northern and southern hemispheres, normally at depths of no more than a few hundred feet. It's found on the west coast of the United States down to California. It prefers a rocky seafloor. In a spot with a pretty strong current, basket stars are suspension feeders, which means that as darkness comes on, they unfold their net-like arms positioning themselves to access the current and snatch edibles as they pass by. Unlike planktivores that specialize in microscopic food particles, basket stars go for small mollusks, jellyfish, crustaceans like shrimp and similar prey. Their arms are lined with hooks and spines that constantly wave and coil to grab prey, wrapping around its victim, encasing it in threads of mucus, and passing it along its tube feet to the animal's mouth to devour. Who knows, maybe in the future this will be used as a grocery bag. Never mind, that's a very gross thought, but at least you'd look like you're from the future, right? <laughs> blood Belly Comb Jelly If the name of a jellyfish has blood and belly in it, you know this has to be something fascinating. Deep sea ships have turned up a lot of odd-looking jellyfish over the years, but the Blood Belly Comb Jelly might take the cake for that. Not only does the blob of the deep have a haunting name, but it also looks like an alien that would take over humanity. This sparkling, deep ocean looking fireball is called a comb jelly for short. All comb jellies have eight rows of hair like apparatuses used for swimming and eating. White light comes from these beating comb rows, producing a rainbow display. All of this makes the animal very bright. These beat continuously as a form of propulsion. In the deep sea, the jelly is nearly invisible, and red animals appear black and blend into the dark background. The final characteristic of these jellyfish is their size. It's only six inches long, which is kind of relieving to hear after seeing these nightmare-inducing creatures. What do you think about the blood belly comb jelly? Is this the most insane sea creature you've ever seen? Or have you witnessed something far more bizarre? Let us know down below. Sea Pig Finally, a name of a sea creature that does not sound creepy or dangerous. 
The sea pig is a type of sea cucumber that walks on the deepest ocean floor using hydraulically operated tube feet. We doubt you've ever heard of a walking fish before. The sea pig is one of the most abundant animals found on the abyssal plain. These unusual sea cucumbers walk around the seafloor on large tube feet, which keep them from sinking into the soft mud. Scientists believe the sea pig can smell its way to food with its body, about four to six inches long, and are related to starfish and sea urchins. Sea pigs live in some of the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. They have water-filled, weak bodies that nearly disintegrate when brought up from these massive depths, ranging anywhere from 4,000 to 16,000 feet below the surface. For those reasons, they're very difficult to study. And luckily, deep-sea predators don't try to eat the sea pigs because their skin is laced with poison. That said, they do have some rather alarming parasites consuming their flesh from the inside out. This is a gross creature, but at least we don't have to worry about these tiny and fragile pigs. Hmm. Bobbit Worm You don't want to judge these on the first look because they have a scary secret under all that sand. Sand strikers, also known as bobbit worms, are primitive-looking creatures that lack eyes or even a brain. They're still savage predators who shoot out grapple-like hooks to reel in passing fish. Bobbit worms are creepy. They look pretty small as it lurks buried in the sand waiting to snatch prey. Growing up to three meters in length, the ambush predator buries its long body in the sand, leaving only its mouth poking out. At night, it spreads wide its jaws and five antenna and lurks. Any unlucky animal, whatever it may be, fish or shrimp, snail or squid, that triggers the antenna will find itself instantly attacked by a lunging pair of jaws at the end of a rainbow-colored tube. We don't know how they reproduce, why they even have rainbow coloration, how long they live or how fast they grow, or how abundant they are. For such a well-known worm, we still know very little. Hate to leave you with the thought of a tropical ocean filled with 10-foot-long worms with hair-trigger jaws, but that's definitely happening at this very moment. <laughs> coffin fish. These fish sadly do not look like coffins, but wouldn't that be interesting? Who knows, maybe one like that is somewhere lurking undiscovered. Coffin fish are thought to be trying to save energy by holding on to oxygenated water and not actively pumping it across their gills. Like all coffin fish, this deep sea creature has two massive gill chambers on either side of the head that can hold a large volume of water, and the fish inflates by 30% body volume, and then it holds its breath until it's ready to exhale. You don't really have to be fearful or even coming across one of these creatures because coming face to face with one of these is simply impossible. The reason is that they live at the bottom of the ocean, at depths ranging from 50 to 2,500 meters deep. The pressure for human beings at this depth is simply not possible to withstand. These deep sea creatures are quite special when it comes to their appearance, habitat, diet, and defense mechanisms. Everything about them is much different from other sea animals. They might just be one of the strangest fish thanks to their ability to walk with their fins on the ocean floor. <laughs> Goblin Shark Goblins and sharks are both terrifying to many people, so we're lucky this shark is not easy to run into. The very odd-looking shark has a unique-shaped snout and an impressive array of long, pointed teeth. The fish, however, is found in deep water and poses no real threat to humans. Like goblin sharks have only rarely been observed and almost never filmed, so most of the scientists' knowledge of this shark is a result of their accidental capture in fisheries targeting other creatures. They're believed to be active predators, and it takes some fish as well as squid. When hunting, they identify prey below their sensitive rostrum and extend their jaws, far from their mouths, to snatch whatever they find. When feeding in this way, they look more like something out of a scary film than a shark. The goblin shark is not fished commercially and is only rarely captured accidentally in fisheries targeting other species. Based on a recent analysis, scientists believe the goblin shark to be a species of least concern. Do you think sharks get a bad rep for being dangerous to humans, or is it deserved? Let us know in the comments. Black Sea Devil Anglerfish Could these fish be the spawn of the devil? Well, you can answer for yourself once you see what these look like. What makes the Black Sea Devil a deep sea mystery is there less known information about it than the elusive giant squid. 
fewer than half a dozen of these fish have ever been recorded swimming in their undersea habitat. A female black sea devil can grow to be about the size of a baseball. The males are even smaller and are actually more of a parasite than a fish. In order to survive, the males must bite into the female. Their tissues will fuse together and the male mates while the female sustains the male. They have a gaping mouth, needle-sharp teeth, a slightly startled look, and a lure on top of their head that glows to help them detect prey. It's unknown if there is a pattern for the illumination or if the light is continuously kept on. They can't be on forever, right? They probably need a quick recharge, like a phone. Pompeii Worm Pompeii worms are mysterious animals that are only found on the surface of active chimneys. Their name refers to the ancient Roman city of Pompeii that was destroyed by ash raining down from an eruption of the large volcano just miles away. Instead of being devastated by volcano conditions, these worms thrive in the scalding hot waters at deep sea vents. The worms are constantly slipping in and out of their tubes. Using red-orange tentacle-like gills, they get minerals from the hot vent and then pop out of their tubes to access more oxygen concentrations in the cooler waters surrounding the vents. They share their tube dwellings with a variety of other organisms. On their own, these worms can only tolerate temperatures up to 55 degrees Celsius, but their coating redistributes the heat to keep the worm cool. The bacteria not only help regulate the temperature of the worm, but they also break down minerals from the vent to help their host. How these worms may benefit from these lodgers is still unknown. Hopefully, none of you got too freaked out from all these sea monsters. We hope you never run into them on your own. What was your favorite deep sea creature today? What was the most terrifying? Let us know down below and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more awesome Missing Files content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.